The world's quickest two strokes looking for history. Side by side, blazing speed. Top end of the racetrack. Can they hit the sevens? They do. They got it. History made. Cycle Drag Universe, two stroke fanatics. Welcome to the great state of Texas. We are digging deep. We have found a hidden gem for you. This is Ovilla, Texas. This is the workshop of Bill Baxter. Oh, yeah, he's got the world's quickest naturally aspirated two stroke. This thing is amazing. So many of you have watched it in action on Cycle Drag YouTube. Well, his engine is unlike any other two stroke engine out there. Let's head into his workshop and find out what this is all about. Welcome to South Georgia Motorsports Park. Let's take you back to what was the fast lap of the weekend heading into race day. This is Alex Hughes. Oh, what a garage. And, and you have cycle drag on, Mr. Bill. It is wonderful, wonderful to see you. Thank you for supporting cycle drag. We certainly appreciate that. Everybody loves watching your amazing motorcycle go down the racetrack. And as I can see, no rest for the weary. Look at this. It's completely torn down, disassembled right now. Where's the motor? The motor's at Doug Flannery's shop in Michigan. Oh yes, we got a lot to talk about. All right, we're gonna get into your one-off engine on your drag bike, but you being the two-stroke enthusiast, the two-stroke aficionado, you gotta show me your street bike here too. This is an unbelievable water buffalo GT750. What year again did you say? 72. 72, let's get a load of this. Two-stroke fans, I told you we're gonna make you drool. Look at how clean this thing is. Well, Bill, I can tell you're not a Kawasaki loyalist, right? A two-stroke loyalist. Okay. Tell me about this machine. Well, this is a 72 that we found in a barn in Nebraska, completely renovated it. And um, believe it or not, this is the first year, and for most of the first year, they had this giant double leading shoe front brake on it. And the uh, collectible value of the bike is probably 30, 40% higher if it has this giant brake as opposed to disc brakes. It's just immaculately clean. Tell me a little bit about the restoration. How much work did you have to put into it? Well, it took me about six months. I had to strip it to the frame and start over again. Uh, when we found it, um, it had water in the forks. It had water in the motor. Uh, it had water in the transmission. I don't know where they had parked this thing. We pulled it apart, and Bill Boone did the crank and the cylinders, and uh, Ken Valeri did the paint on it, which turned out beautiful. And then we ended up really getting carried away and buying... Uh, NOS parts are still available for it. And we ended up spending around $12,000 in NOS parts for it. It's not hard to do. It doesn't take long, does it? The seat was 500. The front fender was 400. You know, everything was like five, six, seven hundred dollars and it added up really, really fast. Absolutely love the bike. Well, I promised everybody out there we were going to talk about your engine. It's so amazing. You're, you're really in a league of your own, a class of your own. Just to update everybody, the all-time nitrous record for a drag bike is 777 by Brian Pretzel. That is with nitrous. You're 783 all motor. Are you on a mission to take that nitrous record out all motor? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I gotta ask you, why why all motor? Well, one of the limitations with an H2 is that little spindly transmission. And nitrous eats them like M&Ms. So I don't, I don't want that hassle. I'd rather fight it at natural aspirated. Seven eighty-five. That record could fall. Bill Baxter wants the overall seven seventy-seven record set by a nitrous bike. Wow, getting there. 785, what is it, uh, 800th? How you doing on the mile an hour? 164 is not our best, but it's not bad for this weather. I'm, we're going in the right direction. Here's even a larger question for you, expounding on that. With the amount of money and time that you're putting in to this project, and we love it, we love watching it. You could go have a turbocharged Hayabusa Pro Street bike. You could have a Pro Open bike, maybe even get into top fuel. You choose to put all your money and resources into this true stroke, why? You know, I'm, that's a question I've asked myself a number of times because it's, you know, I tell people most most racers my age have graduated to real motorcycles and I'm still playing with a glorified lawnmower 
and and it's just I know I like the bike. I like the way it sounds. Uh, I like going quick on a very really small motor, and I think most of all I like the challenge. Yeah, I love it too. And clearly, Cycle Drag YouTube and CycleDrag.com Facebook loves it because the views are always off the charts. Now let's get into the technical side of your engine and the parts that we have. Not all the parts are here, but if you could, please explain how it's different. Bill, we know in drag bike racing, at any level, the crankshaft is so important. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a, mostly an H2 transmission that's unmodified, except for the connecting rods, which are out of a Rotax um, 600 twin. And they're just a lot bigger and beefier. I mean, that's 20 millimeter wrist pin. Um, every, everything is beefier about it. I was looking if I had a stock H2 in here somewhere. Everything in the, in the H2 is really small, and um, the, the uh, connecting rods are a weak link. They're very spindly, and they crack right here below the the wrist pin boss. And there's somewhere somewhere here I have chunks of crankshaft that are broken in the past. So we needed this. The the billet top end is based on a ro on the Rotax um, the Rotax 600 twin. And these are Rotax piston, Rotax rods, Rotax sleeves are in it. Everything in it is based on a Rotax 600 twin. So this innovation, this doesn't happen overnight. This took you a long time and a lot of broken cast with 875. And here comes our number one qualifier, Alex Horsepower Use near lane. He will take on the lightning bolt H2, Steve Chandler, right lane. use eight flat in the heat about two tenths off the record he's chasing but guess what guys it's gonna cool down eventually it's sweltering hot right now but as we get later into the evening how many years you've been in this game oh started racing h2s in the mid 80s and but this i can't take any credit for this motor this is all the brainchild of ralph shipman in germany he he designed it he built it he sent it to me and we put this motor together and went to Valdosta in 2019 with about five runs on a brand new motor and it went a 783. So just the fact that, and this is the original crankshaft and everything's original, we've never heard it. Very impressive. I see we have other components out here. Bill, really if you can, let people know how your motorcycle differs from the other ones that we see. Well, this is Ralph's latest brainchild and it's actually a dry slider. So you, you bolt the plate, put this on the motor, then you actually bolt the outer basket to it after it's put together. And so your entire slider is hanging out in the wind. There's, it's absolutely dry. And this great big seal right here keeps all the oil inside the transmission. Hughes looking for history. Remember, his naturally aspirated record sits at 782. The overall two-stroke record with nitrous is at 777. Hughes wants both. So, Bill, just about everything is billet, but you're telling me this is a GSXR 1000 clutch hub? That's right. We've Ralph took this and he uh, made it a small um, steel collar on it for the uh, seal to ride on. But the rest of this is all billet, all out of Ralph Shipman's workshop in Germany. Now, how in the world would somebody think to try a GSXR 1000 part and an old H2? Well, the reason we did that is it's the same plate. It's the same clutch plates as an H2. Somewhere along the line, Suzuki and Kawasaki uh, collaborated and they used the plates out of an H2 on the 02 to 06 GSXRs and ZX7s. Close race at a thousand foot. The ZX14 gets it. 
Doug Flatter hooked me up with these RXL 650 snowmobile throttle bodies. Is this cool or what, two-stroke fans? Well, if your mind is blown yet, you have not seen anything. We're just getting started because check this out. What makes Bill's bike really unique compared to all of his competitors is he has billet cylinders. He also, in his shop, has what he likes to call the dyno mule. This is incredible, Bill. Um, you got a dyno set up here where you can test the engine, and, and you're telling me right now, if you look, We've only got one cylinder in use, and you can you can crank it up and test that one cylinder. Absolutely. Wow, I gotta take a closer look at this thing. This is some serious technology. I knew this was worth the trip on the back roads in Texas because look at what you have going on here. I didn't even know this was possible. Bill, describe to me what I'm looking at right now. Well, this was a brainchild of Chris Ritchie, and he looked at the crankshafts. He was a good crankshaft builder in England, and he said, there's a way that we can make a single cylinder dyno mule and balance it so it won't come apart. Then he made me a crankshaft and sent it to me back around 2012, I think. And we started dynoing motors on it and it doesn't shake very bad, it revs to the moon. And we only have to cut one head, make one pipe, uh, only use one third of the fuel. It's just, it, it saves so much time, money, effort, and it's only makes 60 horsepower. So we don't have to worry about transmissions or chains or tires. And gosh, we've been dynoing this with the Max ECU. This morning we made dyno pull number 352. Oh my gosh. Wow. So it's not bulletproof, but it's pretty close. So a lot of people don't realize this is where the magic happens. When you get to the drag strip, you've already put in the hours and hours of arduous labor at your shop. Absolutely. When we first got this billet motor, this very one, our very first dyno pull, we made 44 horsepower. This morning we made 66.5. So we've picked up 22 horsepower per cylinder since we first got it, and that's all on the dyno. We don't do any development at the track. What do you attribute the gain to if it's something you can talk about? Um, I don't know how pro stock you are. I don't know how much we can give away here to your <laughs> competitors out there. but uh, Well, there really aren't any secrets in it other than uh, – uh, like I say, one of the limitations of the H2 is the bottom end is very small. It's very limited. The transfers don't flow enough. So that was the work we had to, to figure out is how to get the motor to flow. So Doug Flannery did the first uh, the first go through, and he took it from uh, 44 to 58. Uh, then we added fuel injection and max ECU. And there's a lot of things you can do with it now that you couldn't do with it before, um, and that increased horsepower and broadened the power band. And uh, now we've actually converted it to alcohol. Truly amazing. As for the cylinder right now, the form that it's in, it's just a block. You're going to machine it down to shape. Why do you have it as just a block right now? This was our prototype. We, we actually didn't know if it would work or not. So Scott Sullivan at uh, Front Range Machine in Denver, uh, he built this billet block. and The internals are all exactly the same. We didn't even know if it would work. So we just said, leave, leave it outside as a giant block and we'll put the fins in it later. This is so cool. And you're telling me we can hear this thing run? Oh, yeah. It's, it sounds sounds pretty cool. Oh, I can't wait. So I told you, Two Stroke fans, you found the right video. Bill is going to fire this up for us. I'm so excited. Bill, before we get to that, I got a question for you, though. Um, some of the competitors in your category have got into a very interesting debate, a respectful one. And they've mm -hmm. said, at what point is it no longer an H2? You have billet cylinders. Do you still consider this bike an H2? I do, because it still has the limitations of an H2. You may have put a bigger cylinder on it. It's still roughly the same size in, in displacement, but you still have the choke down transfers and a little spindly transmission. So you have a lot of challenges to work around, even with more horsepower. Have you ever considered billet cases? Is that something we could see in the future? We have. Ralph Shipman, uh, my genius buddy in Germany, has already drawn them up. Uh, he's bought the metal for it, and he has a new five-axis CNC on the way. And he thinks that by this time next year, we'll have a full billet 1200 cc triple wow that's yeah, amazing. very old exciting old and it seems done. like you know uh two-stroke racing it's not the largest class in terms of participation but the guys that are into it are so loyal they're into it for life it sucks you in and it seems like we gain a few bikes every year you and i are talking about setting up a yeah. big race we, we see a big one in martin michigan that you can see on cycle drag youtube man cup finals is pretty strong those bikes are still out there there's they are still uh, 
Purple Haze Racing used to have a database, and he had around 200 drag bikes in the U.S. in this database. Amazing. So there's a ton of them out there in people's garages. I wish they, they'd pull them out. Yes, well, we're going to try to do that. We have been beating the horn saying blow the dust off those bikes and get them back out. There's going to be more information coming on that on Cycle Drag YouTube. But, hey, we promised you we'd uh, fire this thing up. What do you think, Bill? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. with the dyno and how we were testing some things. And he gave me a max ECU for it. How about that? channels that we're monitoring when it's running wow and so and you said since the last time we saw you at the finals you picked up some horsepower huh it's about six horsepower a cylinder how do you find six horsepower a cylinder well then um, we've been working with a fuel injection guy and he sorted out a few issues we had and that was the biggest part of it um nate mccoy um helped us out opened up some flow inside the motor he's consulting on the alcohol complete alcohol setup of course Nate is extremely enthusiastic. He's extremely helpful, and he's one of them bona fide geniuses that oftentimes have to take notes and read it three or four times to figure out what he said. So cool. I bet you've smelled a two-stroke fume or two in your day, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we all have. It smells good. I like it. Intoxicating. I think it's safe to say you got your fair share of expansion chambers. My goodness. Wow. Oh, a lot of trial and error over here? Yep, a lot of them are Doug Flannery's pipes. All the straight ones are Doug's. Uh, there's a couple, one by John McGee, one by Wayne Wright. Uh, these are fast by gas pipes. These are Doug's pipes. And uh, this is one I always show people. This is my show and tell pipe. This is one of Doug's. Can you hold it? Very cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 22, what, does, what does that weigh? 22 gauge titanium weighs one pound. One pound. I feel like I almost crushed it in my hand. I grabbed it too tight. I was used to grabbing an old Denko. Oh my gosh. You said this is for your street bike? Yeah, it's a Case Reed engine. Now you've never had an H2 street bike, right? I've never owned a street, street bike. Henry Wedge built one of these with the Case Reeds built into it. And the benefit of this is there's no intake port in the back of the cylinder. So you can port it very differently and it supports the piston better. But uh, Henry Wedge made these for me and we're going to find a bike to put them in. Very cool. So this is the machine in hot pursuit of that 777. Bill, we didn't talk much about the chassis. Give me a little tour of the lightweight components that we have in use here. Well, Mike Morath started working with us back in 13 and he made the side panels, the dams, the... Um, chain guard, the bodywork, the fairings, everything, every piece on it is, is carbon fiber from, uh, from Mike. And, uh, uh, of course the folk, the forks are Koenig. I bought them from Scott McKinney at a race in Indy one year when our forks broke. Carbon fiber BST wheels on there? Yep. Carbon fiber wheels. Wow. Which I was very skeptical about, but they've been on there now for five years and no issues. They, they seem to work really well. How much does this motorcycle weigh when it's all put together? About 270. 270. That is unreal. Now, that's really where the advantage comes in with a two-stroke. Power to weight. Power to weight. Yep. It, it did weigh 310. We put it on a, on a diet, and that's where Mike Morath came in, and um, uh, the, the wheels and all that. It all added up to almost 40 pounds in savings. Unbelievable. Now, I can see by that picture up there, 
We know that Alex Hughes has piloted this, but so have you. So I gotta ask you, just 200 some pounds, what is this thing like to ride? Well, it's interesting for me because I don't fit on it. <laughs> it's kind of like a monkey screwing a football. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, matter of fact, in that picture right there, I thought I was tucked in behind the fairing and uh, you see I'm, I'm exposed up to my chest. But even with my big fat rear end on it, it went a 520 in the eighth mile. Wow. I bet that gets your attention quick, huh? It was fun. I hadn't ridden it in quite a while since we picked up quite a few horsepower. So I was shocked at how it left the line. It had a 113 60 foot with me on it. Truly it, That was fun. <laughs> Hughes and Chandra's looking for the first two strokes. Side by side, seven here on Cycle Drag. Top end of the racetrack. This looks good. 786 Hughes, 789 Chandra's. They did it on Cycle Drag. Cycle Drag, which plays in Bill Baxter's shop. Do you play it in your shop? If so, let us know down below in the comments. Love to hear from you. Well, Bill, this has been great. We wish you all the best. We want to see you break that record. I think you will with how much hard work you're putting into this machine. Another question I want to sneak in there for you. What, what is the total value of a package like this? If you had to put a number on it, you may not even be able to, but. Oh my goodness. I <laughs> Probably hard to say, right? I, I, I didn't really sit down and put a pencil to it. It's got to be probably $40,000, $50,000. All right. So let me, let me take it a step further. I know that one of the reasons why we don't see a lot of H2 drag bikes is it's very valuable and collectible to bring them back to street oh, form now absolutely. because we see them at Meekum. H2s are just through the roof. I think I saw one go for $25,000. Yeah, my buddy John sold an original one for 20, 25,000 about a year ago. So based on that, the fact that you're playing in a sport, in a category here where, where parts are just uber collectible and expensive, what challenges has, has that presented for you? Well, you know, the, the parts availability is a bit of a challenge for anything modern. Uh, I can get all the H2 cylinders and cranks and so forth I want, but they're not good for racing. They're just not strong enough. So you have to make them yourself. Well, you've done that. So. Well, I, I don't take any credit for stuff that uh, Ralph Shipman does or Doug Flannery. Yeah, big shout out to Ralph. Big shout out. Ralph and Doug. We see Doug up at Martin. Can't wait to see him. Ralph, hope to meet you someday. We'll keep this passion of Two Strokes alive. We know we want to thank Dave Conforti, Worldwide Bearings. Dave. He's done a lot for you. Absolutely. Every bearing on the bike is from Dave. Every, even the crankshaft bearings are from Dave. Anybody else you'd like to give a shout out to? Well, uh, Nate McCoy has been a ton of help on this new project with the fuel injection. And, of course, Steve Nichols. I think Steve's about to block my phone number. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that man sleeps. He's, he might be the only one that goes to more motorcycle drag races than we do. Every time I see Steve, it's, it's very nice and comforting. But we're like, hey, I saw you in Georgia. Now we're in Florida. Now we're in Pennsylvania. Now we're in Virginia. <laughs> we just keep crisscrossing the country. But... Yeah. And it's Dave, worth it. Dave LaCory was also a great deal of help initially setting it up. And I still buy as many parts as I can from him because he was, he was so helpful. Excellent. And, I, and he did block my number, actually, after a while. <laughs> I think he's unblocked it now, so we're good. We've all been there. Well, guys, down in the comments, if you have any questions, come with them. Maybe Bill can answer them if he has time. And please congratulate Bill and encourage Bill because we want to see this machine dip low into the 770s. And maybe even a big race coming this year. Stay tuned for that. Bill, it's been awesome. Good luck to you. Thanks for having us. Known this guy a long time. Great guy. World record holder. More coming. Thanks for stopping by, Jack. Oh, man. I got a kiss. I didn't know I was going to get a kiss. Hey, <laughs> two strokes are worth a kiss. Well, there you go, two stroke fans. If you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. Be a friend, tell a friend, and make sure you're locked in because when this thing hits the track, we will bring you all the action to all our subscribers. Thanks a lot, guys.